It's a breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to take you through the pages of a national dailies. As always, uh, we have Ezekiel Munyai who joins the conversation. It's good to have you join us this morning, Ezekiel Munyai Good morning. I'm sure that we're able to ratify uh, the audio issues, but however, thank you. I start off with the leadership newspaper this morning, and our focus would be on uh, the bold caption, the headers on the leadership newspaper. Looking at the front page, you have Russia-Ukraine war, 200 Nigerians supply to join Ukrainian army as federal government evacuates 2090 today. And that's uh, what the leadership caption said today. Airpiece, Air Max to airlift 650 from Hungary, 350 from Poland, and 940 from Romania, and 150 as well. Federal government, Air Max, 8.5 million for 5,000 evacuees, and 370 Nigerian students trapped in Ukraine. Evacuate all Nigerians, not only student, ex ambassador Gana Yisar tells government. Uh, moving away from that, fuel scarcity heat aviation sector, jet A1 sells for 449 per litre. I remember we having this conversation sometime last week uh, right here on this platform. Consumer Commission asks airlines to suspend airfare and hike. Fuel subsidy sent PIA for amendment. Senate tells President Mohamed Buhari, it feels like we're going you know, back and forth with all of those acts and bills and constitutional review women protest rejection of bill and that's what you also find nmpc dangote fertilizer or the seal gas sale pact international monetary fund asks nigeria to consolidate on fiscal position imf uh, i think we took that already as christians begin lent can decries rising insecurity now, this is some of the headlines on the leadership newspaper. And away from the leadership, we'll move on next to the independent, uh, daily independent newspaper this morning. And the lead story, uh, Nigeria currently governed by myopic leaders, that's according to Jiga, former chairman of um, uh, INEC, says uh, revolution may become necessary. And just below that, there is a, a pictorial there. And the Russia invasion of Ukraine, federal government earmarks $8.5 million to evacuate Nigerians. False batch of evacuees arrive today. On the red strip there, commuters groan as fuel scarcity bites harder. More stories on the Daily Independent uh, this morning. 2023, a failure to elect right leaders means Nigeria is doomed. That's according to... Atiku Abubakar, the airport's concession will be completed second quarter. Uh, that's attributed to the Minister of Aviation, uh, Hadi Sirika. Fire raises house, kills mother, three children while asleep in Ebony State. That's a sad one. Above that story, uh, over 200 terrorists killed in the last four days. Uh, that's attributed to the Niger State uh, Government. Above the masthead, Commission orders airline operators to hold airfare hike. Beside the story, women protest National Assembly rejection of pro-equality bills. Uh, with the writer, men against affirmative action for women, shameless. And that's according to the minister. Those are the stories you can find on the Daily Independent newspaper this Thursday morning. Away from the Daily Independent, uh, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper. The punch says, invasion, Nigeria, 140 others vote against Russia. Ukraine to get $5.2 billion lifeline. Uh, that's what you find here. And uh, embassy sends Nigerians volunteer fighters list to Ukraine. Buhari approves $8.5 million for evacuation. Federal government waives pre-departure test. And that's also um, uh, the rider underneath the bull caption. OPEC raises Nigeria's oil production quota as Brent hates $111 per barrel. Uh, the, the, the question, Justin, here is we remember that as of December and January 2020, I mean, between January, December 2021 to January, uh, January 2022, uh, OPEC has actually 
you know, talked about the fact that we have not met uh, the quota production. But one would think that we take advantage of this window and do better. All right. Insecurity may scare voters in 2023. That's what uh, the Christian Association of Nigeria has quoted to say. Federal government shifts concession of four international airports to second quarter of 2022. If ASU stops fighting, public varsities will die like primary schools. Uh, Fina who's saying all of that this morning on the punch. Federal government orders domestic airlines to reverse 60% airfare hike. Reps to review recommended MDA's merger, and that's also on the punch. Gender bill, no going back, says National Assembly as women fumes. I mean, so it's, it's like, you know, just leave it up until we get to another time. Maybe, just maybe. Nigerians suffering under reckless misrule of elites. Jega is quoted. Vice President Yemo Shibajo, Sean Wolu, or Yitola, others eulogizes at Deboye at 80. And uh, please summon odd, oddly carrying VP's food and ex envoys uh, denies. <laughs> All right, the Senate may pass the revised budget next week. That's what you find on the punch this morning. On the last paper we will review uh, this morning is uh, the Nation newspaper. The main story there, court kicks off process for Kerry's extradition to the United States. Uh, and there's a uh, pictorial there that's uh, from the protest that happened at the gate of the National Assembly. Women, Nigerian women, protesting you know, the gender equality bill that was rejected you know, by the National Assembly. Uh, uh, just beside it to the left, a zoning crisis uh, festers in APC. Above the masthead, a uh, Russia invasion of Ukraine. Uh, 115 Nigerians you know, registered to, in Abuja to join Ukraine troops. Uh, Buhari OK's $8.5 million evacuated and stranded 20, uh, 2,090 uh, Nigerians. Uh, we have uh, lost 2,000 civilians. Uh, UN is saying, okay, just uh, beside that particular story, OAU students' death hotel, yeah, six of us arrived in Oshun to face trial. More stories on the nation suffering of a petrol scarcity lingers, queues at filling stations cause traffic gridlock in cities, panic buying hoarding to blame, NNPC loading has started and uh, more stories you can find on uh, the Nation newspaper. You just want to grab them and uh, make um, informed decisions for yourself. But before we introduce our guest, uh, we'll take a quick break. And um, Ezekiel Nyaeto will be joining us to look at some of the issues on the front pages of these papers in a moment to join us again. All right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We are on to the Off the Press segment. We still have Ezekiel Nya Atok standing by to look at some of um, you know, the stories on the front pages that we had just um, read. Uh, thanks for staying with us, uh, Ezekiel. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Thank you. All right, uh, let's uh, look at some of the stories uh, you know, that um, are really trending. And uh, the whole Nigerians are, uh, you know, Volunteering to go to the Ukraine, uh, to, to Ukraine rather, to fight for them is actually trending. Uh, various um, newspapers uh, capture the term in different ways. Uh, but leadership said 200 Nigerians applied to join Ukrainian army as federal government evacuates 2090. Today, comments, Mr. Anya I, I, I think that um, that figure is, is, is a joke. Oh. If I put up a post on my Facebook page and tell them who would like to go and fight and get the amount of money that is involved, I want to assure you that overnight, I'll get nothing less than 10,000 responses, probably mm. because I deal a lot with the youth. So they're like very familiar with my page. It's not because they really care about Ukraine or anything, but it's because they just which there's something they could do to earn an honest living. So I think it's um, a thing that I said, you know, what really bothers me as it is now is that I hope that this news does not filter back to the ears of our students in Ukraine. 
because if K is not taken, many of them may not come back. They will choose to volunteer so that they can make the money because the thought of coming back is not as pleasing to them because in the first place, there's a reason why they wanted to leave the country. Mm -hmm. And some of them actually either blackmailed their parents or really put such terrible pressures on parents who could not afford. And as a result, they probably had to sell properties or take a loan or borrow money, something to be able to send them to Ukraine. Thirdly, Ukraine would not naturally have friends that have children there, friends, you know. And um, they just look at the school system and they discover that every year you're paying money and ASU is on strike. The federal government is just not listening to them, considering them more of irritants and everything. And at the end of the day, you're like, look, where can I go? And this child will just graduate and probably get a living. And when you look at the different countries, I sent my son to University of Manchester. And I want to tell you, say, the thing hit me. And I was, I literally held Thanksgiving service the day that he, he had his master's and back to Nigeria. What am I saying? Ukraine was one of those safe havens where you could have quality education at a relatively affordable price. So these are all the things we have to sit down and look. How do we make sure the university in Nigeria, the, the public universities, are uh, are uh, up to par. How do we start to prioritize education such that instead of our spending so much money sending our children out, people from neighboring countries will start to come to Nigeria. And it comes to what I've been talking about all along, a government that thinks probably as we progress, we'll be able to just hit some notes that are very important for us to do so. Ezekiel Yaitog, let's also look at the punch newspaper this morning where the caption talks about OPEC increasing Nigeria's oil production quota uh, as we're looking at $111 per barrel. Now, you have some people in, in the sector, stakeholders, and some of the persons who are saying that it doesn't really make any difference because people are thinking that with the current crisis or the, the conflict that's going on uh, between Russia and Ukraine, it might just be a time where Africa can actually benefit, especially for countries that are exporting or, I mean, oil producing countries and exporting. So, but, but what do you think about this? Do, do you see Nigeria um, benefiting from this? Our thought process must be holistic and targeted. That's where I talk in terms of strategic thinking. We have a country that whenever the oil price goes up, my heart goes up. Not in joy, but in trepidation, in fear. Why so? The reason is that the money is coming in. To start with, I'm not sure of how it's going to be managed. But there's a second hand. It means that oil prices for imported fuel is going to go up, so we're going to pay more for the fuel. So at the end of the day, the net effect is negative on Nigeria. We have a lot of money coming in where the management does not give you confidence as to be um, properly managed. But at the same time, you're going to have you know cost of importing crude or fuel is going to be higher because the, the cost of the cost of crude is higher. But if we had this situation where we have a deal that when you buy our crude, you take a percentage and return the rest to us as fuel. By so doing, we are not bothered about market price or no market price. It's like, look, each time I give you um, five tubers of yam, give me back three plates of pounded yam. I give you back three, I give you five tubers of yam, you give me back three plates of pounded yam. So the cost of yam does, is irrelevant within, the, within this context. But we give this our crude, we are happy to collect so much money, and those will turn around and send you back fuel, and they collect on the higher, because the refined product is always higher in cost than the initial product. And then they get all the derivative and byproducts. And you're telling me that six years down the line, a government is not able to fix one refinery. 
Meanwhile, during this time, who is doing the analysis of the cost of the staff of these refineries to the national treasury on a monthly basis? We just don't have a thinking government, and it bothers me. So the price of crude going up international market is bad news to me, very bad news to me, because it means that by the time you're talking in terms of subsidy, when this will come back to tell you what subsidy is, you discover that you are collecting five and getting back 10. You are collecting six and getting back 11. Mm. Who is so, thinking? Who is just thinking in this country? And also, uh, I mean, looking at the fact that uh, as a January, we were, I mean, the production quota by OPEC was that we should be producing uh, 1.63 million barrels, uh, you know, uh, but that was not what we were chunking out. At the end of the day, we we're looking at 1.43 uh, million or thereabouts. And so the, the struggle with always meeting up with the quota might also be another issue. If we're able to meet up with the quota, uh, can we meet up with the quota now? And like you have rightly mentioned, uh, the fact that we would have to subsidize and import this product is just a total loss for us. Very sad. My first question is, can anybody in the media tell us our honest daily production quota? This should not be a secret. Oil exploration is the right to know of every citizen. The meter should be on the production head of every um, um, uh, drilling station. That figure should be transparent enough for every Nigerian to know. This is not a national security secret. Not at all. When that is done, we will know how much production we have on a daily basis. We will know how it goes out. We will know the revenues we get. And we will know when to tighten our belt because something has gone wrong. We will know how to talk to maybe people in the creeks who are not a problem right now, if you ask me. All these are things that this, this opaqueness of governance, this lack of transparency, lack of accountability, they are the perfect environment for corruption. And one of the three cardinal principles, if I, right now, let me even put on record that I have forgot, forgiven my president of every wrongdoing. Every wrongdoing he has done so far, the past seven years, I've forgiven him completely. And I want to put it on record. I even say that if he signed the bill, I will give him a cow. That offer stands. If he tells me where to keep it, I will take the cow there for signing that electoral act. And I think our conversation should move into that because right now there are certain fundamentals that are absolutely necessary in governance. One of such fundamentals is that the president must have a back room where you have hot heads, probably five of them. They are looking at national and international issues. They are forecasting five years from now look at by the time they started talking about covid all right 19. all right uh, uh, mr Nyeto, because of time uh, let's uh, try and uh, get some other stories in uh, so that uh, we can uh, do so much uh, the nation has um, another story as it's a um, banner headline and it is uh, on uh, Kiari, uh, government uh, kicks off process for Kiari's extradition to the united states uh, does it come to you as a surprise, uh, Mr. Anya Etel? It's, 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 um, it's a question I'm trying to um, ask God for wisdom on what to answer. <laughs> I pray you get the a wisdom, country, sir. A country is, is burning. My guy, I don't know if you know where we are in Nigeria today. And I'm coming to talk about Bikiari. What? How's the bunny they pursue rat for bush? For me, it's a non-issue. Mm. Mine is how do we get this country working right? Because the principles are the same. This guy has done wrong. Where is the punishment parameters for this country and the reward processes? Those two arms, where are they? Coming to talk about carry, 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 carry. Please, let's talk about issues that can advance the well-being of this 
I just got a message yesterday. My staff, the wife just slumped and died. Just slumped and died. No sign, nothing. My staff or my former staff. Young people are slumping and dying. People are dropping like flies in this country. Why is that so? There's pressure, there's tension. There is something we cannot put our fingers to. And I think that the time has come when we really need to look at the elephant in the room and address some of these national concerns. Hmm. All right. So let's just move away from that and talk about other stories that are still trending. Uh, Ukraine is on the lips of practically um, everyone in the world, and the federal government has earmarked um, $8.5 million to evacuate Nigerians. When Ukraine started, the five people in the back room would have seen one, two, three, four steps ahead. Sir, if this scenario plays out, this is what you should do. If you are to do that, this is what you must put in place before time. I want to say one simple thing. How many Nigerian students are in universities outside this country? Where and how? It takes absolutely nothing to know. Two things. One, CBN. We are coming to ask for scholarship or um, you know, money to, to pay whatever. We need to have details of the child. Second, as a nation, we want to be able to take care of you. As a result, there is a bureau in the Federal Ministry of Education that says on this portal, log in so that if there's any issue, we'll know what to do. So there is a problem in, 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 in Ukraine. You go to that portal, you click Ukraine, you know all the students, you send a message to all of them. This is a situation. If this happens, please do this. If this happens, please do that. If they, you are in constant touch with them because every one of them has a phone. So long before time, each of them knows what to do and it takes nothing but a thinking government. Guy, what I've just told you now doesn't look like something that is difficult. Secondly, they talk in terms of evacuation. Before that time, you would have known what to do. You would have had a, a, an aircraft standby. And you would have been the first. That's how to be the, the giant of Africa. Now, Ghana has done it. Today, we are trying to approve money. Nobody knows how long that approval is going to be cash-backed. Or we are going to say, APIs, move. We will pay later. APIs knows that, bros, don't move. Oh, this is what they said before. Relax. Let them pay you. So they tell you, we are fixing the aircraft. They are not fixing anything. They are waiting for you to pay because the last time that they did that, you did not pay. We have a country where we don't trust the system. So we can't take certain risks. If you do that, your business collapses. And we are where we are today. And please tell every young person, go get your PVC. 2023 cannot continue this way. Just as we coasted down this morning, your thoughts might just be aligning with the caption on the daily uh, independent newspaper where Nigerians currently governed by myopic leaders, according to Jega. Awesome. Awesome. These are people that have no understanding of what governance is. These are professional politicians. People, look, politics and governance are two parallel lines. It's like an engineer of, a, of a, an aircraft and a pilot. Politicians are like engineers. They fix the aircraft. The pilot has to come and be the government. But now we are putting engineers on the cockpit. And it's not the same. You are a good engineer and everything, but a pilot was trained. It's like a nurse and a doctor. Nurses are awesome. They are wonderful. But they specific trainings for doctors. And when you do that, but today the, the criteria for leadership recruitment is how much money do you have? Can you afford to pay? I'm running for the governorship of Akwaibom State. But when you come to Akwaibom and you see what is going on, the conversation is not on ideas, on ideologies, on fit for purpose. It's like, oh, he has money. Oh, he has the backing of government. The, the, the conversation is so skewed in the wrong direction. At the end of the day, when that person wins the seat of government, the money and the support is no longer relevant. What is relevant is what is between the ears of that person. So I think that the media should seize the conversation as the fourth step of the realm. Plus, CV Africa is doing very well. I commend you. But I want to say, please, like Oliver Twist, do more. Set the agenda for 2023. Don't report the agenda. Set the agenda. And I will continue to be your number one fan. 
<laughs> All right. Thank you so much, um, Ezekiel. Uh, we are actually intrigued that you are going to be our number one fan. We do appreciate your time. Yes. Ezekiel and I joined us uh, to look at um, the stories on you know, the major pages of the newspapers. Thank you so much once again. My pleasure. Have a lovely day. Uh, you too. All right, we'll take a quick break, and when we return, uh, we'll look at um, women's um, rights. But before that, let's uh, look at what um, happened this day in history.